Anchor Down Admiral Nation, it is episode two of the weekly podcast, the Admiral Brag Sheet, joined here again by my co-host, Wesley Hyde and Trip Alexander. I'm uh, just going to bring you some information on what happened this past week in Gulfport Athletics, talk a little bit about uh, the coming week, and then we're going to talk some NIL. So we've, we've had a little bit of time to research that and talk a little bit about how that might impact high school athletics. So we're just going to go through a little recap of the week that has been in the, in the past week. And starting off last Tuesday, our boys golf team was at Sunkiss for the district tournament. Wesley's got a little report on us for that. Yeah, so it was a good day for the, uh, the boys Admiral golf team. Um, we, we tied second in the district tournament. Um, the leaderboard is Crosby Parker shot a 78, Tyler Gruich 73, Cannon Parker 86, uh, I shot an 84, Reed Williams 81, and Owen Bellinger 101 for a team score of 316, which is uh, really solid. Um, to make state, we had to break 360 as a team, and we broke it by, I think it's at least a lot, 30 or 40 yeah. shots. So uh, <laughs> Quick math there uh, yeah. for you, Wes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a good day. Um, Shout out to Crosby Parker. I think he came tied fourth. Um, he made the all tournament team, and then Tyler Gruich uh, with the second place finish. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a big day for us. Uh, we're looking forward to state. That'll be uh, Halloween. I think it's uh, the 31st and then November 1st up in Jackson. So uh, yeah, it was a really good day for us. Yeah, Tyler and Crosby both making the all tournament team there. That's that's big time for the for the Admirals and finished second, I believe, is that right? Yes, to Ocean Springs finished first and we've we've really worked at closing that gap between us and the top. Yeah. So what what's that kind of work been over this past season in order to get better and close that gap? Um yeah, you know, we've we practiced out at Windance Country Club. Um we put a lot of work in, you know, with Coach D'Angelo. He's a really good coach. Um, and one thing I was going to mention, uh, so last year the golf team, I think, had 11 players or 12 mm-hmm. players, and then they moved the season from the spring to the fall. Mm-hmm. So that brought in a lot of new athletes, uh, including me and Owen Bellinger. So two of our varsity players are, are first-year players. Um, you know, just putting a lot of work in to uh, shorten our strokes, you know, mm-hmm. and just, uh, you know, have a good time and have fun out there. Yeah, yeah. So that's – one of those really good moves by the MHSA when they flipped from the spring to the fall that really allowed some baseball players more yeah, than anything else sure. to come out. Um, and, and baseball players tend to like playing golf quite a bit. Yep. So that's been a really good move. And, you know, kudos to the MHSA for making that move. It's really helped out a lot. Sure. So uh, moving on down the list, the last Thursday, the girls' golf team, was uh, was at Shell Landing. I got the opportunity to go out and watch them play. The girls uh, finished fourth in the district tournament. They uh, they also qualified for the state tournament. So bo- both our boys and our girls golf team qualified for the state tournament. Uh, Avery McHugh led the way for us. She shot a 94, um, our top score. And then our, our other participants, uh, Lala Lee, and then um, um, it was going to be Jordan Ladner. Ladner were our top three uh, scorers there for us. So they got a chance to advance to the state tournament. Just always a good good opportunity to go play in the state tournament. Um, I know you guys both have had some experience advancing deep into the state playoffs. What's that like to represent your team late in the state like that trip? Um, I mean, it means a lot. Last year uh, with the soccer team, I know for sure, we weren't – I mean, no one really – thought that we were going to get that far we had a lot of guys get injured and I mean it's, it's like you're proving something but with I mean with golf the, the girls are you know hitting the ball strong and I mean they're ready to go I think I mean they've had a lot of good performances last week two of our girls scrambled to 69 together that's below par yeah that's very impressive they would what first place second place in the tournament they got they got second in that tournament yeah, that so, day so, that so was I awesome. mean if they can carry just hitting the ball like that further in the playoffs and, you know, stay together, I think that they'll have some tremendous success. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic to see our Admirals and Lady Admirals advancing in the state tournament and in golf. So great things going on out there. So moving on down the list, um, you know, our our, um, our football team with another dominant offensive per- performance last Monday night at D'Iberville scored 56 points, um, of course gave up 32 uh, but the offense was just clicking on all cylinders. I just want to read a couple stats because it's kind of silly how good we were uh, <laughs> Friday night. 532 yards of offense, 
We only had 33 offensive plays, 16.12 yards per play on Friday night. I think we had one third down the whole night, so we were getting a first down on either first or second down the entire night and scored a lot of touchdowns, obviously. 301 rushing yards, 231 passing yards. Got a chance to talk to Coach Panic. He said he's not sure he's ever had an offensive performance like that, and that's saying a lot from some of the teams that he's had offensively. It was just every guy on the team I don't have any stats by one individual guy but every guy on that team was just performing at a high level that night and, and those guys are clicking on all cylinders it looks like we're, we're healthy knock on wood that that can continue to happen um, because I believe with as many weapons as we have and as good as that offensive line is playing um, we should be able to put up put up a lot of points on everybody um so just a great night all in all for for us at d iberville that night and again we're just creeping our way towards ocean springs in a couple weeks we do have saint martin this week so obviously can't look past them but uh how exciting is it to know that game's looming there here in a couple weeks uh yeah the the ocean springs game is going to be huge uh i think it'll decide the district right Who yeah gets, sure which should. which seating um yeah, no, I, I, I didn't get a chance to go to the Diaberville game, but I was watching on my phone, and it seemed like they were scoring the first play of every drive yeah, almost. Yeah, It was insane. Um, yeah, just – I think – was Nico – he was perfect, right? He was 10 he for was 10. perfect throwing yeah. the ball 10 for 10. That's uh, insanely impressive. Yeah, 10 for 10 for – for uh, 231 yards, yeah. you know, incredible. Cam Joseph had another good night catching the ball. Um, you know, uh, we had Cooper Crosby ran the ball really well. All of our backs, once again, just just ran the ball great. 301 rushing yards. Not a lot that you can't say about those guys and how yeah. dominant they were. So it was a great night for the Admirals. I know we're looking forward to another great night this Friday night, but we really got that game circled here in a couple weeks. Yep. So, um, And that'll that'll be our game of the week that week, obviously, because yeah, sure. that's going to be And it's at Milner. At Milner Stadium on October 27th. Cool. Yeah, so uh, we're going to need the whole community to show up for that one because – Ocean Springs has been really good for the last few years. And, you know, just to be honest, they have owned us the last couple of years. Um, we're going to have to bring our A game because it's going to be two really good teams going at it that night. So we're definitely going to need everybody to be out there. And hopefully we can flip that script and start turning it back around in the Admiral's favor that day. Um, let's go ahead and move on to, to Saturday. We had a lot of... Uh, cross country and swim action going on. I believe we got some coverage of, of the swim team, some video coverage of that. But I want to start off with the with the Admiral Bayou Classic. Um, that was our cross country meet that was run at Bioview uh, Elementary School on Saturday. It was it was a chance to run through that park over there at Bayou, which is a really nice park. It's you know. Uh, kids out there practicing soccer you've got you know people out there barbecuing the whole time we're running a cross-country meet just beautiful we had a lot of really good times and uh, our, our girls cross-country team came away with the win that day which was huge for them uh, Ava Benefield led the way for us uh, with a 21 13 point four nine run that's that's pretty fast for for 3.1 miles I bet it hurts me to even think about going out there and running <laughs> 3.1 miles right now probably not you guys but oh, um, no. I, that's tough to do and it's tough to do really fast so um, and then we had uh, Gianna Morales with a 22.18 uh, Lucy Stewart with a 23.08 uh, L Simmons with a 23.19 and and uh, you know just just dominated that race that's uh, you know, I think we had four Gulfport Lady Admirals runners in the top ten that day. So, they're creeping towards state, um, getting ready to get there. And, and, and just an excellent performance from them. And the boys finished second overall in that meet. Uh, did a really good job. Ethan Polk led the way for Gulfport High School with with uh, 1920 miles, uh, or 1920 finish, and um, just had some other admirals that were out there running really well. Uh, but the girls were the were the story of the day, and you know, obviously we've 
last year we made some changes with the cross country and the track program bringing in Brittany reese you know olympic gold medalist to to kind of lead up the program so you know what do you guys think about cross country and going out there you know there's a lot of coaches that that use this phrase cross country is that sport where your actual competition is the thing other coaches do to punish you. You know, well, you coaches punish kids by making them right. run, but these kids are going out there and choosing to go run 3.1 miles on their own. Uh, thoughts on that trip? What do you What do you think about that? Um, I know that some of our some of our soccer guys are on the cross country team. Actually, I think most of those like what is it six that are the mm-hmm. representative are on the soccer team, and they're they're lightning fast. I mean, they get out there, but it's. It's a very mental sport too, because mm-hmm. I mean you gotta really think about how you're pacing yourself and you know what you're doing. It's very impressive that they can get out there almost week by week as well, and you know continue to just run the way that they're running. I mean, uh, I know Polk has been working very hard yeah. to you know um, do what he's doing and finish, and he, he sees the results. So um, I mean, yeah, kudos to those guys. They're putting in the work, and I think Coach Reese has them definitely where they need to be, yeah. and uh, they're getting ready for the playoffs in state. So. Uh, they're doing the right thing. Yeah, Coach Coach Reese and Coach Lawrence doing an outstanding job with that. And you mentioned the mental side of that. It's it's very hard to just go out there and you fight yourself mentally with a lot of things that you do. I know I got into I got into some running a little bit a few years ago and, and there is a point, you know, you get to. For me it's an hour. When you start running for an hour, I'm like, why am I doing this for more than an hour? And a lot of these kids are going to turn into those kids that run half marathons and marathons and and make that a lifelong sport. So, you know, mentally, sports are are huge uh, as far as fighting yourself mentally. Um, But these kids are choosing to go out there and probably about as mental of a sport as there is and, and just doing a great job, and we're super proud of them. So. Um, let's move on to the swimming pool. So Tripp's got a, a little report from the South State Swim Meet. The, our admirals and lady admirals did a great job, had a lot of kids that qualified, and Tripp's just going to go through a little bit of a report of what we what we did on Saturday. Yeah, so the South State Swim Meet uh, definitely has a lot of swimmers there, and it's very hard to actually p- put performances together. You have to be very uh, close and you know make sure that you're, everyone's working together as a team. And uh, actually our girls finished fifth with a 46, but those – Two through five are very competitive and mm-hmm. you know, very close. And then our guys finished sixth in the district. Then again, very competitive, honestly, two through six. We were 20 points off of third place. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's two swims. And uh, we had a lot of our individual guys and girls qualify for the state championship meet. And so I'm just going to read off some of those names. Our A relay, which is Cecilia Sanders, Harper Murphy, Marley Pickage, and Savannah Grimsley. Also, our boys' A relay, which is Finn Safley, Jonathan Palma Palacios, David Desharnis, and Dante Locke. Um, CC Sanders also qualified in the 200 yard free. Uh, Jonathan Palma Palacios also uh, did in the 200 IM, which is a very hard swim. Uh, kudos to him. Uh, Savannah Grimsley is a dog. She qualified in 50 free. I mean, she's insane state champion from yeah. last year oh, yeah. yeah and yeah. she's she's first and she's a second ahead and in swimming a second is a very <laughs> decent margin of victory especially in a short race oh, yeah. like that yeah so 53 is the shortest race that we swim with mhsaa uh david descharnis finished in the top 10 for the boys 53 which had 17 racers so i mean he finished sixth place uh, Finn Safley also qualified in 100 yard fly. Savannah again in her 100 yard free, so she qualified also in first place. She won by four seconds in the 100 yard free. That's crazy. So both of her swims, all three, she's definitely outdone her competition. Boys 100 yard free, David Descharnis again, uh, third place that time. He's putting together some nice swims. Our A medley relay and our A uh, boys medley relay. Cecilia Sanders again in the 100 yard breaststroke. And then, uh, yeah, so. Congrats to those guys um, coming in with really good swims, and you know, hopefully they'll be working really hard to shave some seconds and you know make sure that they're doing what they need to do in the pool, getting ready for the state championship. And I know they're ready because I mean the season's coming, and you don't want to yeah. be swimming when it's too cold. So that's right. But uh, they're definitely working hard, and they've they have a long season, and to be swimming like that every day is very impressive. Yeah. And they're doing a great job. And special shout out to Savannah; she won three races. Yeah, so uh, like I said, a great performance at the Biloxi Natatorium this past Saturday for the Admirals and Lady Admirals. Uh, they're going on to the state competition this past week. We just mentioned cross country is a mental sport. 
um, as well as the physical sport. Swim is another sport that, that's mental, especially when you get into those distance uh, events. Trip, you have a little experience swimming, you I know. Do. what uh, What's that balance between physical and mental that there is in swim? You know, I'd say, honestly, I mean, I don't want to sound like that guy, but I'd say swim is probably one of the most physically demanding sports. Mm-hmm. I mean, people don't really, like, understand, like, what it takes out of your body to go and swim. This is 100 yards, so yeah. this is swimming the length. Of this is like, field. And they call it sprinting. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, its term is you're swimming as fast as you can. You're pulling your arms. You're kicking your legs. Like, I used to get out of the pool when I was doing my races and, like, like need something to eat, and yeah. that's just swimming. And there's also 200-yard races. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you're really – I mean, it hits you. Because I also so I swim butterfly, and that one takes a lot out of your body. And you're swimming 100 yards of that, so you'll kind of see that some of those times are longer because more strokes are you know longer and take more more time to do. So freestyles would be the fastest one, but those guys are swimming fast. I mean that's 25 seconds. That's that's two yards a second. Yeah. So I don't know that I can run that fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Most <laughs> most people are actually swimming faster than they run. Yeah. That you would think so. It's, it's crazy. It, it's very physically demanding. It's also mental, too, because when you're also swimming those longer races, you you just want to be done after your first 100, and you still have 100 to go. Yeah. And there's also, I don't know if they still do it, but there used to be a mile swim, uh-huh. and Savannah actually used to kill that. But, um, that, I mean, that one is crazy because you just want to be done. You're swimming for 20 minutes. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's you just want to be done, and you're not. I mean, you try to have to really mentally push through the yeah. race yeah. and finish it out. So. Yeah, so so tough thing to do. Um, I don't think our swimmers get enough credit for what they do. You know, there's there's a lot of sports in the athletic department, which is what we're trying to bring here, attention to some of these kids that are doing some things that nobody else can even think about doing and doing it really well. You know, you've got some experience with that in golf. You know, we're just talking about some swim right now. Um, all these kids deserve a lot of attention, and we, and we really appreciate it, and, and uh, we hope the swim team does really well at the state championships. But uh, we're going to bring it to the game of the week this past week, and it was our Lady Admirals uh, getting a chance to be in the first round of the volleyball playoffs. Didn't go the way we wanted it to go, uh, but it was a great season for them yeah. overall. I know all three of us got a chance to watch them play. A little bit this year just want to recap the game just a little bit um first of all in the first set we did fall in the first set 25 to 19 but we jumped out the gate really strong i think we had a had about a four or five point lead very early in that match and in northwest ranking just they looked the part that night uh they were really good they fought back and took that first set 25 to 19 but the admirals they fought back and did what we do and what we expect them to do and they took the second set 25 to 20 so it looked like we settled in pretty good uh with that um but but northwest rank was just just too much on that night i think um you know we had a very inexperienced team for the most part this year we lost a bunch of those kids you know brooklyn montanas and the ak runsvilles and, and all them that had been playing since they were in seventh grade and so there was really no room for those other kids to get a chance to go play Um, And I think our inexperience maybe showed a little bit that night, uh, falling 25-18 and 25-19 in the last two sets, and we lost three sets to one. Uh, But it was a really great year for the Lady Admirals. Won 29 games last year. They only won 30 altogether with all of that experience that we had. Uh, Wesley, tell me what you saw from the volleyball team this year and and how proud we are of them. Yeah, you know, it was a great year. Um, Like you said, Kind of a rebuilding year, yeah. uh, it seems like. You know, first year head coach, only having, I think, two seniors yeah. um, on the team. But to put a 20, almost 30 win season together is super impressive. Um, and, you know, obviously it didn't finish it the way the ladies wanted it to, but uh, huge props to them. You know, it was a great year. Um, I know we had some great great crowds uh, show up. Um, I know the first round kind of wasn't as – how we were expecting it to be, but uh, yeah, and, and let's talk about that the the whole crowd situation because you know you you play throughout the year with with really good crowds yeah. and especially at home and uh, then you hit playoff time and you, and you know we do some things in the athletic department that help out with crowds coming in a little bit we do the big blue pass so you can bypass and come to all the games all year long and then we we do some things for students to help them out coming but. And then the playoffs roll around and, and 
you know, we gave kudos to MHSA earlier for, for the golf decision that they made that helped out a whole lot, but it just seems like $10 to go yeah. watch uh, watch the high school volleyball game really hurt our crowd a lot. Um, I know neither one of the two of you were able to come to that game. It wasn't because of that. It was mostly because you had other practices coming. Um, but, you know, what, what can we do that can help out with that situation so that we don't hit the playoffs and then all of a sudden we don't have home field advantage anymore because it costs $10 yeah. to come in? I mean, I know we've kind of worked our way around that a couple times. Like last year, I think the girl, the girls played South State for soccer at home. We found a way that the students could get in free. The booster yeah. club stepped up and helped out, yeah. But I, I just don't think that you should have to do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Personally, right now, I can't propose, like, a, how we could work around that, but – I just don't think that, I mean, I know like that a vast majority of people were like $10 to get in the game is crazy. And I know a lot, like coming from a student, a lot of people's parents aren't going to go and give them $10. I mean, that's $10 that a lot of people work for. And like, I mean, as a student, you know, people have most, some of their most fun in high school in the student section. And I don't know, it's kind of, it's not like they're ripping it away, but to pay to do it. Makes it hard. Yeah, it, it makes, makes it really hard. So, I mean, I know a lot of people are like, like what, $10 is crazy. I love the volleyball team, but. I mean that's that's a meal. Got to eat. I mean that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I don't know. It's just it's dumb. I, I feel like I would have gone, but I, I had soccer practice. But yeah. I think that it's it's not. I don't know. I don't, I can't propose a solution. Per, I mean per se, but it's just I don't think that that should that yeah. should be a thing. Yeah, and I think uh, I actually did make a proposal to the state for for um, for something that might help out with that. And you know what my proposal was is. You know, any kid that shows a photo ID, any high school student that yeah. shows a photo ID at the gate shouldn't have to pay more than $5 to get into the game. And it's one of those things. Do you want $10 from a few people or do you want $5 from a lot of people? Exactly. And that was my proposal is I think you're going to get a lot more money out of that if you charge less. It's the whole supply and demand. It's yeah. an economic discussion, but... Um, I took a picture of the crowd, and I showed both of you guys that picture at the beginning of the ball game. We had, I think, five or six students in the student section at the beginning of the game as compared to the massive entire student section filling it up. Now, we had some more students that showed up as the game went along, so there weren't just five or six, but it definitely hurt at the beginning of the game when you want your student section to make a big impact. So uh, what do you think, uh, Wesley? Do you think that lowering the price would bring more people in? What's that balance there? Yeah, um, I think your proposal is perfect, yeah. honestly. Um, you know, a photo ID, I mean, it's really simple. Just bring that in, yeah. five bucks, and go to the game and have fun. You know, volleyball is one of the – I know a lot of high school sports are, but especially volleyball, it's all about momentum. Yeah. And having a student section behind you, I think – I'm not going to say it would have changed the outcome of the game, but it probably would have given the Lady Admirals a little bit more of a boost. Um, Which is what home court advantage yeah, is supposed to be exactly. about. That's what you fight the whole year for is right. the chance to host in that first round. Right. So I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on that, yeah. but I, I just do feel like that's something that we got to be able to do better as, yeah. a, as a high school activities association. But, again, it was a great year from the from the Lady Admirals. You know, Kaylee Johnson, I think she was an awesome senior leader for, sure. for us. She was, she was our one kid that had some really good experience coming in the year, and she was a big reason that we, we won 29 games this year. And I'm just looking at the stats. She, she's there in the top two or three in just about every statistical category. Um, but the great thing about looking at all these stats is that we've got a bunch of young kids – that now have experience and can bring that to the court. You just go down the list of, of all those kids. You know, you got your Lily Trostelers, your uh, Liliana Ruiz. Um, you know, you've got Big Izzy out there who's just killing the ball this year. Sahara Cooper, you know, just a lot of Lucy, – Lucy McHugh is one of those kids that played JV that I feel like is going to be able to step up and help out on varsity coming up. Uh, really soon, Sydney Allen. You know, that's a lot of names to read that are all coming back next year. What do y'all think about what's the future look like for the Lady Admirals? I mean, I think that it's very uh, bright. You know, they have the talent they needed, but they also have to fill the gap in Kaylee. That's right. So, I mean, not just on the court, but, I mean, even watching it, and I've talked to Kaylee about it because, I mean, we, we were both in salt together and, you yeah. know, we talked about leading strategies, and I think she took some of that and carried it very well to her team. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
you know, filling that that captain role. Because, I mean, even watching her on the court, like, she just made sure that everyone was in check. Anytime the referee had a problem, she didn't, they didn't bring it to the team. They brought it to Kaylee. Yeah. And Kaylee brought it back to the team and how they addressed it. And I know she probably got some yellow cards for her team. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've witnessed. And that's I think that's something the leader has to do as well. But filling that role will be, I mean, someone has to step up, mm -hmm. I mean, and do it. But Kaylee definitely worked very hard and, you know, poured some really, really quality time into that sport. And for that, I think watching year was crazy. But for, for the years to come, I mean, that reading this list, sophomore, junior, freshman, two freshmen in the top five yeah. on our team. I mean, that's, that's, that's three more years they have to play volleyball, and they're already in the top five on a team. Mind you, they got 29 wins. Yeah. Big so, time. I mean, that's to have that. I mean, you got more juniors that are gonna be back next year. They're not just the freshmen, there's sophomores there. I mean, going down that list, there's one senior, two, two seniors. We had two seniors on the volleyball team uh -huh. this year, so I mean, they definitely have a, a bright future in, the, in what they're doing. And even watching them just play mesh together, I mean, they'll have three more years to go do it. So, yeah. I mean, uh, Wesley, what do, you, what do you think, you know, is there that one person that can kind of fill that leadership role, do you think? Or is it, you know, a collective of them? Or how's that going to work? And what do you think the, the future looks like for the volleyball team? Yeah, you know, the future sounds like it's on the horizon. It's it's coming up there. I know we had a really good team last year. Yeah. Um, you know, some might say it was a down year for us. But honestly, it's probably a learning experience for all those younger players. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to see how far they go next year and in the, in the years to come. Yeah, awesome. All right, that kind of that wraps up um, the week in, in athletics. You know, it's kind of a slow week this week coming up as well with, you know, footballs at, at St. Martin on Friday, swims in the state swim meet in Tupelo. Uh, but what that basically means is that we've transitioned into winter sports now, uh, which means soccer and basketball and powerlifting. They're, they're all coming up, and there's going to be a lot of time to talk about that in the, in the future. But – what uh, uh, an interesting topic that I just want to get your guys' opinions on right now is uh, is NIL and high school athletics. And um, Coach Pennick actually sent me uh, a, a text a couple weeks ago about uh, NIL in high school and how Georgia just became the 30th state uh, to have NIL for high school students. All right, so 30 of our 50 states now have NIL for our for high school students and for those of you who don't know nil means name image and likeness so high school kids are actually getting paid for their name image and likeness now much like some college kids are it's not quite at the same level um, but mississippi doesn't do it yet our, our state legislator has voted on it a couple times and they have voted it down um, i think they're just not ready to to make high school kids kind of like a professional athlete which is totally understandable and i think it does get out of control at college sometimes so just to talk a little bit about what nil is i've got this article um written by james parks on fan nation and it came out on may the 8th of 2023 and just a little description of what it is and um college has been strictly amateur since 1869 until the last couple of years um, but now uh, college kids are able to get paid for their name, image, and likeness now at this point. So um, they can sell those things to individual companies um, and get paid for it, which is which is pretty cool because for the longest time, colleges had pushed out people's jerseys and and uh, and their profiles and things like that and made money off of them, and the college kids were not able to make money off of those. So really cool to be able to do that uh, players can accept money from businesses in exchange for them using their products or advertisements and we're going to get to some of these kids here in just a minute um, and it happened in june of 2021 the supreme court uh, unanimous, unanimously uh, said that college kids can do this so that set it up to where the ncaa had to put some guidelines in place and they have put those guidelines in place um, a lot of colleges will have what they call a collective where the businesses will come together and have an NIL collective where there's kind of a pot of money and that money's distributed to, to some kids based off of what they do and, and what they do for advertisers. And now that's starting to drift its way to high school. But before we get to the high school conversation, I just want to talk about a few of these these college kids that are getting paid pretty big at the top of the list for nil deals is Bronny james lebron james son obviously he's making 6.1 million dollars every year 
uh, just for being Bronny James. Um, uh, Shador Sanders, obviously Deion Sanders' son at, at Colorado, who's making $4.1 million. Libby Dunn is the first female on this list, but she's number three on the list. She makes $3.2 million. She's a gymnast at LSU. Arch Manning, uh, the son of, uh, of uh, Cooper Manning, who's in that Manning uh, he's not breed of athlete. He's, he's not even a starter, he's string, but he's making $2.9 million. Crazy. Isn't that, that crazy? It's you know, crazy. a lot of these kids are making money before they actually make an impact on the field, right. uh, which is crazy. Caleb Williams at USC, he's making $2.5 million. He had a rough weekend this past weekend. Yeah. Th- three interceptions were really early, and – and their team was hurt. But that's just the top five right there. That money right there, guys, can you even imagine making $6.1 million if you're Bronny James? What, what kind of change does that make to your life if you if you get something like that in one year as a college kid? Yeah, I mean, that's just insane. Um, I know the NIL, is, it's kind of changed the whole college at- aspect and atmosphere. Yeah. It's, it's more like a profession now. It is. You know, with – Teams like Colorado, you know, players transferring in. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I know Ole Miss, their backup quarterback is uh, from Oklahoma State, Spencer Sanders. Yeah. And he hasn't played a snap all year, and he's, I think, getting paid close to six figures. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. it's it's insane, especially because I know I'm a Ole Miss fan, so I was reading about it, and uh, he would have been, like, the all-time leader at Oklahoma State in passing yards, mm-hmm. touchdowns, all this stuff. And then he just decides to ship out and go to Ole Miss and, and make some money. Um and yeah, it's it's really changed the the whole atmosphere. It's it's really interesting to see how it's going to affect high school also. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's a great transition. Let's start talking about high school. Um, obviously, there's not going to be six point one million dollars right. out there for for our high school athletes. Now, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen somewhere with some prodigy that's coming up through the ranks, but let's talk about Gulfport High School. And let's say Mississippi one day comes to a point where they allow NIL deals. What kind of impact do you think that made? What, what kind of what does that do to? Let, let's pick one of our biggest athletes, uh, Ethan Sirowick, on the baseball team. He's obviously he's committed to Ole Miss. Um, he throws a baseball 93, 94 miles an hour, which you know you do that, and the professional scouts start paying attention. Um, what what kind of impact do you think that makes on a kid like that, or any of our other kids that might go on to Division One level? Uh, I mean. For, for Ethan's sake, I think that it, it could be a little more like – knowing him personally, I don't know if he would do that actually. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I still – if if you're in a position where he is, because you can get drafted out and it'll be in high school. Yeah. So, I mean, if he if he wanted to make money, because I know that going through the farm system, which is the minor leagues, so like prerequisite to the MLB, which is the major leagues, where you make your money, uh, there's not a lot of money available for the minor league players. I mean, it's not – most of those guys are just aspiration guys. Yeah. Not saying that, like, they won't get there, but, I mean, there's a lot of guys in farm systems, and there's not a lot of guys that make those rosters on the MLB, especially in the postseason. There's a very few that make an impact on the – in the baseball world, mm-hmm. for sure. So to go ahead and get that money, kind of, mm-hmm. it takes – because a lot of very talented players go and take the college route now because yeah. of NIL um, – just I think what there was a guy that got drafted in the I think the first round last year. Yeah. And they went, ended up going to LSU. I mean I guess they won a national championship. So I mean I don't blame him, but he's gonna be making more money that year than he would in four years in the minor leagues. Yeah. So yeah. now he has a little bit of you know ground to go off of, and I think if you can do that in high school, it takes a little bit off the stress on your shoulders knowing that you don't need that money. I know you're not gonna make six point one million dollars. Yeah. Like Bronny, especially from Gulfport, but I mean. To go ahead and make some kind of money to have a foundation kind of lessens the decision of whether you're going to college, whether you're going to check the draft, you know, like whatever you're going to do. Yeah. So, I mean, it just depends. I mean, there's certain situations for certain sports, but I would say in Ethan's situation, it, it kind of it, – it's some security. Yeah. I think I don't – I mean, I don't really – I can't think of cons of right now. I mean, yeah. everyone else is doing it. I don't – there's already th- 30 states plus D.C., which I don't know if there's high school territory in D.C., but, I mean – they're already doing it there. Yeah. So, I mean, why not? So, Wesley, where do you think that money comes from? If if we're getting, if we're paying high school kids, yeah. does that money come from our local businesses? Does it come from, you know, somebody from a national corporation that wants to come down and sponsor one of these? What are, what's the realistic expectation of where that money comes from? Yeah, um, I was kind of thinking about that. I would probably say, like, local business, stuff like that, because I know a lot of college players um, – 
support local businesses and have like brand deals like they'll wear a shirt or post something on Instagram yeah. and probably make some money off of that yeah. Um, yeah you know it's one of those things where like I think it'll benefit definitely the players but also the businesses because they'll be getting that advertisement or whatever yeah um, and you know Mississippi is usually they're usually the last to <laughs> do stuff like this and yeah. uh, you know I think it'll eventually happen yeah. um, but no, I think it's it's more benefit b- beneficial for the players than anything else. Um, so you know, I think I think it should definitely be considered. Uh, I think it'd be a overall good thing, honestly. So. Okay, so I want to throw this at both of you because I, I I know adults and kids think about things in different ways. Right. So I'm gonna approach it from this way. So if we're paying individual kids money. From our local businesses, do you think that takes away from the businesses giving the athletic department as a whole money, or do you think that's just stuff that they're going to throw in on top of what they're actually doing? I mean, when you put it like that, it makes it a little tougher. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like you would have to know a little bit more of how those local businesses work, because yeah. I know that the athletic department for sure and like different sports teams have like constant sponsors that yeah. they come back to every year. So I don't know if that, like the high school NIL, if say someone from Gulfport got an NIL deal and used one of those sponsors, yeah. would it like affect it? I'm, I just don't, like I feel like a lot of it would have to be like resurfaced. Like yeah. they'd have to just talk about, like I think as a whole that the small business was for sure support the athletic department oh, instead, instead of one kid, but especially the ones that have been long time sponsors for us. But um, I mean, I feel like there's st- still some that also don't support the golf court, I mean, really school district at all, yeah. that could be reached out to by the players. Mm-hmm. Because also there's a lot of, I mean, especially like in football, there's a lot of small business owners and, and people that could support it that come to like the games. Like they just are like, like seek attraction in these guys. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like you could also reach out to the ones that aren't supporting it already yeah. to more expand what we're doing. But if you're trying to reach those, I feel like most of our, our like prominent sponsors would probably, you know, just – resurface it to where they could continue to do what they're doing with the athletic department and also pour into guys. So, I mean, I, I don't know, but, I mean, like you said, it's inevitable, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's coming faster than we know. But still, I mean, we've got – I mean, that's that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. and I do – I it is inevitable. And, um, you know, I, I have my personal opinions on paying high school kids. Right. I don't necessarily think that we should, but – I don't necessarily think that it's the worst thing in the world to do it. And and I do I, – I tend to be a, a pretty progressive person when it comes to uh, changing things. Um, my wife and I have a saying in our household, which is uh, tradition is just peer pressure from dead people, you know. <laughs> and, and that's what the whole uh, – that's the way we've always done it is a bad way to think of things. Right. So that should not be your reason for anything that you do. So just because we haven't done it before doesn't mean we shouldn't do it in the future, but I think it comes down to research, and let's let's figure out the best way to do it. What do you think about that, Wes? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think, obviously, it, it is, it's coming soon. I'd say, if I had to guess, probably within the next five to ten years, I'd see it coming down to Mississippi. Yeah. Um, Less than that, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe even that. Um, I would hope so, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And I just said I'm not necessarily in agreement that we should do it, but I, I do think that – we can't be last again. Yeah. Mississippi cannot continue to be last over and over and over. It's yeah. almost like a trend too. Like, yeah. like just hop on the trend. Look. Like, yeah, yeah. Let's. I, I tend to like to be a trend setter as yeah. far as a trend follower, as opposed to a trend follower. But it's fifty we, states, though. I mean, that kind of just looks like you're lacking. Yeah. You put a bad, it, bad rap on it. It it does. Yeah. So, um, I think it's something that we definitely have to explore, and not wait to be the absolutely last, because I think what you're gonna see if we become last. Um, I think everybody saw the news stories at the beginning of the season. George County's four-star quarterback left George County to go to Tennessee. Now, it wasn't for NIL deals, but he went to an academy up there where he thought there's better opportunities. Okay, Gauthier lost a wide receiver to Alabama um, because he thought there were better opportunities. If other states around us become NIL states – 
how many of our big time athletes are going to jump ship and go yeah. over there? We can't, we cannot allow that to happen. Kind of like think, how it's going on in college. Yeah. The same thing for high school. Yeah, kids. absolutely. So we we've got to be able to figure out a system that's going to work for us and, and do it, uh, do right by our students, do right by our school, and make sure that this is a great experience. So anything else you guys want to throw in on the NIL? I mean, I was just thinking about this. Like, all I know is like, it'd be cool to like. See Prince in a Rouse's commercial. Yeah, then, that would be like yeah. like see some of our players like get shouted out by local businesses. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be positive all around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think it's a good thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Trip, any final thoughts? No, I mean I, I think it's coming. So yeah. I mean, here's a warning. I mean, not warning, but I mean, definitely, I think it's coming. For yeah, sure. yeah, I think we gotta get on board. And I think the more times that we have conversations with kids and adults on this situation, the better it's going to help this I mean, that was a good now. question, too. I mean, I didn't really think about how that would take away from the athletic department. I was just kind of just thinking about, oh, like, what if I can have a commercial with, yeah. I mean, yeah. where my father works or something like that. Well, that's right. That's I don't right. know. But great stuff today, guys. Sure. Really appreciate you once again stepping Thank up you. and helping out with this. I'm looking forward to how this grows every single week, and we highlight the athletic department. As I said, it's kind of a kind of a light week yep. uh, when it comes to fall sports, but that just means winter sports are, are picking up right now. I know you're ready to go uh, ready to for get. soccer. I know basketball teams are ready to get after it. Um, I can't wait to see our winter sports hit the field and hit the court and looking forward to it. So um, until next week, um, appreciate everybody tuning in and hoo-yah.